good evening. I'd like to call the Monday, June 17th, 2024, Borough and Select Board to order. Um, with us tonight is Joe Staub on my left, Tor Nelson on my right, Carol Nuizel. Um, Flo Smith is with us by Zoom. Uh, I'm Brad Town, and Additioner changes the agenda. I'd like to add the letter of engagement uh, for our FY 2024 audit, and I would like to remove the VTrans curb cut on um, parking from road. Okay. okay. Um, any public comment? Hearing none. Uh, Dicky Dam with the City of Montpelier. So. Kurt was just on, but he apparently has dropped off. Oh, here he comes again. So Kurt Matoika with the City of Montpelier, uh, their engineer, and Tom Willard are here to discuss the Dickey Dam. Uh, as we mentioned at our last meeting, uh, about a year ago, the state did an inspection on the Dickey Dam and found some uh, deficiencies. Uh, so Tom and Kurt have been going back and forth on kind of what the next steps uh, are and should be. And so, Tom, I'll turn it over to you for your thoughts and comments you have. I didn't print out, I only printed, you know, we had this last week, yeah. the report, I didn't print everybody out a copy they want to refer to it again. Okay, I, I do have some comments. I don't know if Kurt wants to make a presentation first, but... Kurt? I get some issues first that can hurt my... Uh-oh. <laughs> Could you repeat yourself, please? What does that mean when it's blinking blue on the box right there? Blinking blue? In front of me. Yeah. We, we no. Hear you. no, you're coming through gabble. Or not okay, I'm going to try oh. on my own. That was better. Okay. okay. Well, I'm setting it up on my phone just in case because I keep getting booted out here on my computer. Um, well, at least we can. So yeah, I'm just gonna give you an update. Okay. Well, maybe I'll turn my video off. It might make it easier to hear. Thank you. Um. So I was just gonna give you an update of where the city's at with the Dickies Dam, um, what we've done to date, and what things are in the works. Um. So uh, we got the, the state report again shortly after the flood, about a year ago. You cut out. Yeah, we dropped off again. Well, you want me to go first while he's yeah. working on the technology? Yeah, go ahead. Um, Okay, so Kurt, Kurt's right after the flood, the state inspected the Dickey Dam, and the Dickey Dam is definitely in fragile conditions. You know, it's a gravity stone dam, and some of the stones in the middle, if you go out and look, they're, they're sliding. It's, it is failing. It's, so the city, um, the city is working with the state. Um, they were concerned that if there was a catastrophic failure of the Dickey Dam, that their water supply in the pond would drain. Well, the pond could drain like two feet or so, and then the culverts, the inverted culverts across town road, would control the level of the pond. So it could drop a couple feet if that happened. So uh, I guess the city's not unwilling to have that happen. Um, they, they dropped some stop logs. There's a concrete box culvert that goes underneath uh, Brookfield Road and then goes underneath the interstate. And th that concrete box culvert has some keyways in the side. 
So the city came and dropped some boards down there to hold, to maintain the level of Berlin Pond. Um, I think it, that was done in October of last year. And nobody really noticed um, until about January of this year, we, we noticed that the pond, of course it was a wet year last year, and, but the pond was much, much higher. It flooded places through the winter that had never been flooded before. And we were concerned about the vegetation, the wetlands of the aquatic biology. So, so when we went and looked, we saw the stop blocks, and we said, whoa, who did this? We, we didn't know who did it to begin with. We searched around, and Tim promised me he didn't do it. And so eventually, uh, the city said, yeah, we did it because if the dam failed, we wanted to maintain it level of the pond. And so I took a bunch of measurements, and, the, and they, they put about two logs, about one foot too high, or, foot and, or two and a half feet too high, too many boards in, is what happened. So now what you had was a waterfall that all winter long, the pond was a couple feet higher than it should be to go over the waterfall and then continue on down through the cross-down culverts and over the empty dam. So, you know, Kurt and I communicated and we agreed that, yeah, there were too many, too many boards in there, so I, we told the city we'd really like you to get the boards, at least some of them out, before the loons start nesting, because the loons nest there every year. And they agreed, so um, they, um, they sometime around uh, April, mid-April, they pulled two six-inch boards out and, uh, and replaced it with a, essentially a, a three-inch piece. And what that did is that the flash boards, the boards that they put in the keyways, was exactly the same elevation as the spillway of the Dickey Dam. Mm -hmm. You know, the thinking was it, it does the same thing. Well, the, the problem there, and so the, the lake did, did drop, it dropped uh, over the next month or so, it dropped, and uh, the loon's nest, and by the way, we have one baby loon <laughs> as of nice. two or three days ago. Aww. So, um, um, but I think, in fact, I, I know that there's, it's still a, a few inches, three inches or so, still too high. Um, but what happens is during low flows, lower flows like today, it's okay that the, dip, the elevation is kind of the water gets flat back to the flashboards. But when there's higher flows, like in the fall or the winter or during big rainstorms, what happens is the concrete, the, the stop logs, there's five, about four or five feet of stop logs that come up and then the top of the stop logs, and then the sides of the concrete box culvert. It's only 10 feet wide. <coughs> now the spillway at the Dickey Dam is almost twice that in width. I think it's 18 feet wide and of course the dam's a lot longer. So what happens to get the same amount of water, if this makes any sense to you, to get the same amount of water through 10 feet to maintain the same elevation of 16 or the entire dam, it, it raises the level. So at higher flows, those stop logs are going to cause the lake to be higher than normal. And one of the reasons that the Conservation Commission and others are very concerned about this, one is, you know, the aquatic biota and the loons and so forth, but also um, this is a graph. I, I, I've been taking measurements since February, and this, the lower, the lower one, this is below the weir that they put in, and this is above the weir. So you can see this is the elevation of Berlin Pond, and this is what it should have been. And, and, and don't the scale here is a little exaggerated. It's only one inch each of these. Yeah. So this is, the highest it got was about 15 inches too high. Um, now I think that was back in February, maybe. 
And then you can see they pulled it here, and when they pulled it, you can see upstream it dropped. So now the elevation between the downstream and the upstream is only about three inches, the difference. So, so and we're, we're not, right now, we're not worried about three inches, but uh, one of the reasons we're worried about having this too high is that when the wetlands, uh, you'll notice at the south end of Berlin Pond, if you look out, you'll see a whole bunch of cedars that have, they're, they're dying. And I, I can't prove it, but my guess is because of the very, very wet summer, and then because we were high for four or five months, I, I think maybe they, their feet are just too wet. But, but in general, the higher levels will kill the wetland vegetation. What happens, invasives come in, and we've done a lot of work with invasives trying to get rid of them all. Um, so there's a lot not just impact on nesting waterfowl and amphibians and turtles and other things, but also, uh, also the, the vegetation. So, so the city took out what what was too much, and I, th I think it's still a little bit too high, but you know, we're not going to argue about three inches. But what we might argue about, and I haven't talked to Kurt about this, um, but because I'm interested in seeing, as I understand, they're going to do a temporary stabilization of the Dickey Dam until they get the final report of what they're going to do. Um, First thing I want to do is put out of the, get out of the city's head that the solution is to get rid of the dam and use these flashboards because that's going to completely change the ecology of the lake for the reasons I just said because as flows go up, the lake level will rise much higher. The other thing is Crosstown Road will then become the dam, the new dam. The beavers plug their culverts, or, or um, if the dam's gone, because right now the dam, it's kind of flat water that goes back up through the culverts. So, so um, hopefully the city is here tonight and will tell us if they get the communication going that um, they'll do some kind of stabilization this year because. I don't think we really want these flashboards in place uh, through the winter, from October on, with this kind of a rise in the, in the lake levels. So hopefully, hopefully they've, they've got a plan in place to solve that. So by putting those boards in the, in the culvert, they basically changed the uh, hydrology of the culvert. No, actually, the, because they put the boards in, and once the lake rose, then once it got stable, the same amount of water was going over the flashboards as was going through the, the concrete box culvert. So it's the same amount of water that you got to your culvert. Yeah, but you restricted the opening of that culvert. So if you have a high water event, you only have so much opening for the water now to go through, whereas before you had the whole culvert. And now are you talking about the concrete culvert? The concrete the culvert. Right. right. I thought you were talking about the yeah. cross Let's let yeah, uh, that's right. jump in. Yeah, the, He's back the, on. online? Yep. <clears throat> Kurt? Yeah, sorry about that. Having technical issues here. Can you hear me okay? Yep, yeah. Um, okay, so I just wanted to clarify a few things that Tom noted. I was able to uh, listen in for part of that. Um, so the current stop log elevation at the pond is about an inch and three quarters lower than the crest of Dickey's Dam. And, um, you know, he raised a concern about the change in elevation. So I had staff measure the height of the water both at the, um, at the dam and at the uh, the spillway at the pond, or the stop logs at the pond. And um, it lined right up with the survey. The water depth was inch and three quarters deeper at the stop logs than it was at the dam because it's inch and three quarters lower than the dam elevation. And that was, uh, I don't know, a month ago or so. Um, so, I, you know, I think it, it warrants more measurement and monitoring to see to really determine exactly what the impact is currently. Well, I... I don't know how much you heard, Kurt, but I've, I've 
day, I, not daily, but, but at least weekly been collecting data. And I suspect the city probably measured it somewhere around between June 5th and June 10th. And like on the graph, you can see that upstream and downstream yeah. levels, uh, they come to this point here together. They were the same. The main reason for that is that the culverts were plugged. There were three feet, there was a three feet dam, three foot dam at the inlet to the Crosstown Road culverts. So from this date, uh, from May, roughly May 5th on, there was a there was a backwater, three foot backwater back to the, and so the water over the, and my data showed the same thing, that there was no difference between the upstream and the downstream elevations on that date because one, the flows are relative, it's not a high flow period, and the beavers had a three foot dam at the cross dam culverts, which, which affected the, the data. Kurt, you back? I am. Is there a number I can call on my phone because I keep losing connection? Do you guys have some another way that I could do it on a cell phone and put me on speaker? Um, uh, try 793 0010. Can you call the number to the Zoom meeting? I don't know if that would be any better or not. I'm just not going to call. try. Well, I could do it that way too if you prefer to call in on the Zoom. Well, no, try number. the first way. I just didn't know. I know the, one of the meetings I was at, they thought it was going to cause feedback, but I, you can try it. <coughs> okay. So, Tom, if the dam is repaired, does that mean those stop logs are no longer needed? I'm, I'm just trying to understand the relationship. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You there, Kurt? I'm going to call the number now. <laughs> Zoom sucks. I guess if you get kicked out of Zoom or something, I don't think call them. Okay, is that you, Kurt? Yes. Oh. Oh. Does any of this affect our property? Well, you know, on that too. Um, um, if the dam failed, it'd drain. It'd drain. So, it would just be a brook. If the dam fails, would the stop logs be enough in of themselves to protect the pond level? They, they would. Okay. They would. Well, no. The stop logs could keep the level. To where the day that uh, that the that the dam failed, but if there were higher flows, the stop logs would would cause higher levels in the pond than would have had the dam not failed. So, but it wouldn't be there wouldn't be an issue of them not being strong it, enough to prevent the pond from no, draining. No, they're plenty strong enough. It's okay. It, you know, the head on those boards is, is relatively small. I think it's four feet or five feet. Then, Kurt, I don't know if you can hear me. Um, is this a... Is this a possibility for hazard mitigation funding? Yeah, so I was getting to that. So we have okay. applied for a scoping study for hazard mitigation. The, that's for looking at options for removal or rebuilding. And it's a high level study, look at environmental impacts. That's kind of a preliminary scoping study. And then uh, based on those results, we'd move to a full evaluation uh, as the next step. And it's gonna take you know some time to get through those steps, but the first deadline is in January. That's different than the temporary stabilization. That is FEMA eligible. We have not got clearance from FEMA um, to do that work yet. I'm hoping to do it before winter, but I, you know, a lot of it depends on the federal funding and how fast things move. Um, but yeah, the, the idea is to put a temporary uh, rock buttress on the downstream face of the dam to temp. Lost them again. <laughs> 
Kurt, is that expected this year? He's gone. He's, he's gone. Oh, he's gone. <laughs> I thought there was a lull at the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> so can I ask a question? What about the, the pipe running through the pond? It runs through the back of mine, and it probably runs right through yours. Um, if there's a water pipe like you know, big yeah. in my pond, and if the pond drains, let's say the thing fails, boom, Montpelier has frozen water. Well, possibly uh, that volume of water, I'd be surprised. Yeah, because they're they're drawing a lot of water every day. Right. And if the lake, if the pond level drops, I think the pickup tube is still what. 15, 20 feet below the surface now at regular level. That's what I understand. You know, so. you know interestingly enough, in uh, maybe you've all seen it, uh, during a really dry summer, uh, I think Rob Allen uh, has some pictures and, and some documentation, but I would say once every four summers or so, this, this pond, the, it, you get in a drought, and of course the city takes a little over, what, a cubic foot per second or something out. Watershed isn't producing enough water. It drops down to the invert of the cross down culverts. And then this pond, because the dam leaks so much, leaks away, and there's no water at all in that pond until it, it rains again. And it smells great. What's that? It smells great. Like yeah. Water. So it, it, you know, and it might stay that way for a week until it until it rains and the flow gets up to the bottom of the cross down road culverts and it fills that pond again. And by the way, uh, there is a, a legal agreement between the city of Montpelier and the town of Berlin to maintain that pool. It was for fire prevention at the time, but. I'm not sure it's stated the purpose. There's a legal agreement that the city will maintain that, that pool. Hmm. we got a dry hydrant right there. No. Yeah, we do. No. Kurt, you back? Um, we'll see how long it lasts. <laughs> uh, one, one option is that the city is, is willing and interested in turning ownership over. I mean, staff is out to get council approval, but turning it over to the town of Berlin, if the town of Berlin had interest in owning that dam, something for you to consider. Um, right now, we have not made any decisions. We, we really need to go through all the engineering studies to look at all the impacts. I mean, it's, it's a big effort. It's going to take years before we actually you know, want to move forward with any changes to the actual dam itself, other than temporarily stabilizing it, like I mentioned. When so you, something for the board to consider. When you say temporary, temporarily stabilizing it, what are you talking about? What kind of repair? We're putting rocks on the dam. So this year we hope to put rocks, a buttress, rock buttress, like a 45 degree angle to the top of the dam down to the water surface to kind of hold the rocks in place, hold the dam in place until, until we can get through all the studies. And that's FEMA funded rather than through the HMGP program, which is the, the longer term studies. Kurt, uh, this is Tom again. Um, if the dam was satisfactorily stabilized this summer or fall, I assume then that um, the flashboards could be removed or at least uh, a foot or so or more so that during high flow periods the pond doesn't unnaturally raise the flood levels? Because I think... We, I'm we, certainly... Um, I'm certainly... Yeah, I'm just thinking... We're open to looking at that. Uh, you know, I still... Um, you know, I think there's something about the impact of the water level still with the backwater of the dam on the, um, the stop logs. I think some of the head loss is mitigated because you don't have open channel flow. Um, so I would I would say that we're open to that, but uh, we would want to proceed cautiously. Just, um, you know, we're, I think we have a lot of the same goals in that protecting wildlife sure. in the event of a catastrophic dam failure. <laughs> Buttress is not 100% guaranteed. So 
I, I guess I would just need to um, look at look at that. I'm not saying no. I just think it it warrants further evaluation. Yeah. All right. Well, I I'd, I'd like to keep in touch with you on that. Uh, as far as the Conservation Commission and the Berlin Watershed Association, the, the stop logs as they are is is not satisfactory um, as we get into the higher full periods in the fall, and. Um, because what, what will happen during the higher flows of uh, is the pond will be significantly higher with the existing level of boards um, than naturally occurs. And whether removal of a foot of boards or would do the trick or not, we'd have to, we'd have to evaluate that. But I, I think it's unsatisfactory to continue the way. And I, I, unfortunately, you're not here, and, and we got some technical difficulties. Um, and I don't know how much you heard, but I have been. I've got a whole notebook of uh, data elevations, um, and I this afternoon I graphed it up for tonight to show you. Um, I can forward that to you. It'll it'll, it'll show. Um, what the effect of the removal of the boards that you did and what the effect when the boards were in place and what the effects are today. And by the way, it was June 5th when I measured as there was no difference upstream or downstream because of the, and I think that's, I'll bet you that's when your staff measured it because I measured it and there was no difference on that date because the beavers had a three foot dam on the cross down culverts and it backed up to the, do your stop mm. I think the measurements were right after the dam was removed, based on your your emails. Um, so I know I think I think well we also have years of data of pond elevation, you know before the stop logs are installed, which we can share with the board and you, Tom. Um, yeah. You know I think the those measurements are highly impacted by the amount of rainfall. Um, you know the, the weather, so I don't think a snapshot in time is really, you know, adds a, a whole lot of value to the impacts, honestly. But um, I think the, like I said, we are open to it. I, I want to do some more data collection. I want to, you know, see how the buttress works out and how comfortable we are that the dam is stabilized. Uh, if we're a foot lower than the Dickey's Dam and it, and it ruptures, um, you know, it's going to have just a terrible impact to not only water quality but the but the wildlife population so we're just trying to be really careful about what we do here and protecting uh, all the interests involved kurt what's what's the depth of the intake tube for the day for the Montpelier water system it's roughly 20 to 25 feet i believe i think it's closer to 20. And there's, Tom, you said there's six feet of boards there now, or? Like about five feet. But five feet. if the dam ruptured the invert of the culverts, the most it could drop would be two or three feet. And I don't know, Kurt, is that a, is that a um, I know you have a siphon there. Is that a siphon problem if the pond did drop two feet? Uh, it could impact the siphon, um, but by our, through our water permit, it would um, automatically trigger, trigger conservation, so uh, mandatory conservation with the city if the water level drops below a certain point. So it would have a, a pretty big impact on the city um, and all its users. I'm not sure about how it would impact potentially the you know the air releases and everything for the um, for the raw water main. Well, one option might be I I don't. I don't want to problem solve, I just can't help myself. <laughs> you know, uh, you could have some kind of winch there and and place boards or remove boards depending upon the uh, hydraulic characteristics of the watershed. So if the Dickey Dam failed, you could immediately drop a couple boards to keep the lake from dropping two feet. You're going to it. By that time, the you know, the impact on the loons and everything would have happened right before we could react to something like that. It's the, it's the flooding that m most of us are mostly concerned about, but um, 
It, it, would, take a, it would take a while because the um, culverts at Crosstown Road are controlling the flow at that under those when Dickey Dam fails. So it would take a, quite a while. It would take, probably, I'm going to guess, a, more than a week for the lake to drop a couple feet because of the outflow, the outflow uh, hydraulic characteristics of the culverts. Not uh, perhaps, I'm not certain on that. Um, so, you know, I think my recommendation or, or ask for the board is, um, is that you give us at least to the end of the year and we can meet again and next time I'll come in person so I don't keep losing connection. Um, <laughs> that we keep things as it is, you know, as, so that we can maintain our protection of the water supply and wildlife and we regroup uh, towards the end of the year. Um, and hopefully I'll have a buttress in place at that point. I don't know, like I said, it depends largely on FEMA, um, but we are trying. We have 44 flood related projects at the city. So this is one of those. Um, so we're getting our hands full, but uh, we're gonna keep moving forward. And we have already put the request into FEMA for with the estimate of what it's gonna take to do the, the temporary buttress. So we're kind of waiting on them at this point. Yeah, I, I really appreciate Kurt working with us to try to solve this. Um, I would just suggest maybe before the end of the year in the fall, because as I say, we want to readdress those. I think we want to look at this stop log issue again uh, before winter, before the end of the year. So no long about October, or so maybe sometime in the fall would be a better time than the end of the year. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's fine with me. I think also in the in the interim or during that time frame, particularly during heavy rain events, I'll have our staff or shortly after rain events, um, our staff compare the two elevations and document that. We daily um, document the level at the pond itself. We have for uh, basically since the plant was built, well, at least the last ten years, twenty maybe, um, and we compare it. We, we document that to see um, to see if we can actually determine how, how much uh, of an impact there is during high flows. Now I'll get our decision um, in the fall. Yeah. Well, I think the requirement for the city to to uh, measure the the elevation of the pond that's in your wetland permit, and that's to keep the pond from being drawn down too far. Um, yeah. So. This flooding issue is a kind of a different animal. Yeah. Any other questions for Kurt or Tom? No. Thank you very much, Kurt. Thank you. Thanks, Kurt. Thanks, Kurt. Thanks, Tom. Yeah. Thanks for having Thank me. You. Sorry for me. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll get a hold of you when you uh, this fall. Okay. Sounds good. Yep. Thank you all. Thank you. Okay. A special event permit for Central Vermont Runners. So they uh, have come back to us again this year for the five mile foot race on August 15th, 2024, uh, from about 4 p.m. to 7.30 p.m., anticipating about uh, 70 participants. Um, Parking is here at the town hall, and then um, there are signs, you know, around the pond, you know, instructing residents and, yep. and everything. Uh, no, no comments were received from the police or fire departments. Uh, so I move to accept the special event uh, permit for Central Vermont runners uh, and waive the fee. I'll second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, Runaway right permit for Goodnow Road. Okay, we have uh, Jeff Lusky um, online with us. Uh, this is part of the uh, new auto dealership going in uh, on US 2. Um, part of their application to the DRB was that they were going to make improvements to Marvin and Goodenow Roads. 
uh, including uh, doing the uh, so paving of this road. Uh, so basically, this is uh, part of the process. Uh, they went ahead and did the work without having the permit in place. So this is basically just to cure that. Uh, Tim has been out and looked at the work. Um, he's satisfied with the work that's been done. It's uh, been paved to the uh, proper width and everything, and that, that was one of the concerns with the original paving. Uh, so, Jeff, I don't know if you want to jump in on anything, but uh, you're welcome to. Yeah, just briefly, uh, for the record, my name is Jeff Oleski with Ken Mount Consulting Engineers, uh, the civil engineer for the project. And um, yeah, I think the chair summarized it adequately. We apologize. It's kind of an after the fact uh, request. We had thought we had everything in place um, as far as site plan review and approval by the DR board. And, and uh, I know Tim Davis was part of a pre-construction meeting out there with AOT and the site and general contractor uh, back last year when we started doing this uh, the roadway improvements and didn't realize there's a separate permit to pull, so to speak. But um, so yeah, the, the, the improvements of both Marvin Road and Goodnow Road were have been completed. Many buddy has been out there in the last couple of days. That is all uh, complete. And there's <clears throat> that section of Marvin Road from Route 2 to the intersection of Goodnow Road, as well as the first 150, 200 feet of Goodnow Road are also all paved now um, as a, a hopeful benefit to the, the town. Um, but I believe my understanding in talking to both Tim as well as Tom Banowski in the planning and zoning department is that they're both comfortable with the work that's been completed out there and, uh, and didn't have any issues with it at this time. So um, I'll turn it over to the board if they have any questions for me. Any questions for Jeff? I move to approve. Second. Any other discussion? Those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you very much, Jeff. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Jeff. Okay. Yeah, and again, apologies for the, the retro permit here, guys. But have a good night. Yeah. <laughs> Enjoy your evening. Thank you. Um, fiscal year 24, um, reservation of funds. So we're at that part of the year, almost uh, New Year's for us. Oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so part of that process is to uh, designate any funds we want to reserve from the current year Thanks, budget. Tom. Thanks, Tom. For uh, future years, for the basically for the same purpose. Um, so I've got a list here of $343,688.11 um, that I would, uh, that I moved to reserve. Just this is just excess money in any line item. Is that how does this how what? basically correct? Okay. That will that will carry over. Okay. If we didn't do this, then uh, the money basically just gets Beyond released it. and right. Gotcha. So do we hold these for? use in these line items Correct. for a later time. Okay. Correct. Yep. And I guess my only question is, is there any, do we, do we see any need to have funds unallocated that, to be, that need to be used for something else? Uh, that's, I mean, I don't, I guess that's, so well, our reserves are basically, I mean, we, we, um, looking at the draft from last year's from the fiscal year 23 audit, um, we only have like 5,000 there that we're going to have. I and mean, what we do need to have unreserved monies for, for rainy day funds. And this is 
and we do have additional categories that are not included okay. in this. Okay. Gotcha. Um, these are just ones that we feel that we can use in the future okay. in these categories. That makes sense. So we shouldn't get- I make the motion to approve the reservation of funds for FY24. Joe, are you gonna, I think Joe, Joe was saying something false. Here a second, we can go into okay. it. A second. Uh, any further discussion? So we shouldn't get confused on this being a sign that we over budget. Is that fair to say? Or is that something that we did in some some cases? Well, the, well some cases it is, in some cases it isn't. Um, for instance, the trash removal um, highway on the second page, we're purposely building up that reserve um, to get rid of tires. So, you know, we're, we're sitting for a couple years in that category. Um, and I'm assuming for road things, it might be a project that, again, you're built like the guardrail. The guardrail guard is exactly yeah. correct. And highway equipment to build that reserve yeah. fund. The Emergency Management Committee, Joe, I emailed about the uh, EOC phones. Oh. We never got that invoice. Okay. I'll make sure you get it. I'm okay. Fred, yeah. would you mind briefly tell me what you're looking at? What is that? What you it's know? just a list of the, the line <coughs> items. What has been expended and what has not been expended in the uh, what we're reserving for oh, each of those line items. So this is money that wasn't spent in this prior fiscal year that we're almost ending. And we got a new one coming July one, which will be FY twenty five. Correct. Yeah. So this is kind of like leftover money or money that things change. We know. Use it, and the government would say use it or lose it. Oh. Well, I said, put, hopefully, well, hopefully we have a savings account and we're saving for a rainy day fund. Well, that's 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 what funds that rainy day fund, correct? But some of this money yes. is like because we don't budget a lot for say fixing a guardrail. Yeah. We just keep saving this up till we so if we need to use it to fix guardrails. We got the money there. Yeah. And believe it or not, even use guardrails are expensive. I bet. <laughs> Probably even more to put them up. <laughs> so, any other questions on this? That's great. Thank you. Yep. Um, any other discussion on the reservation of funds? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, purchasing policy, conflict of interest policy updates. So. Um, we've got some minor changes to both of these policies um, as part of a Department of Public Safety uh, risk assessment review. They wanted to see some items added to these uh, purchase these policies, uh, mainly we're dealing with uh, federal funds, either direct federal grants or indirect. Um, So these, these changes have been reviewed and approved by the Department of Public Safety. Uh, the main thing in the conflict of interest policy is um, basically strengthening the uh, Article 11 uh, requirements for Enforcement basically taking out where it said may to uh, shall that there will be some enforcement if if there ever is a violation and I pointed out to them that there has never been a violation but they wanted to see it in the in the policy um, and then the purchasing policy um, 
they wanted a statement in there that um, how we as a town would review costs to make sure they were allowable under federal regulations and so under purchasing authority I added a uh, paragraph there that um, purchasing agents will be required would be responsible for projects receiving federal funding either directly or indirectly to be reviewed under two Code of Federal Regulations Part 200 to ensure allowability of costs. This includes the purchases of the agent reviewing any proposals received, uh, contracts before signing, and invoices prior to payment against the limitations contained in uh, Title II Con Code of Federal Regulations Part 200 Subpart E and as stipulated in the grant agreement and attachments, the purchasing agent will initial each document listed above as having been reviewed and all costs are allowable, necessary, reasonable, and timely in accordance with the above federal regulations and grant agreement. So I move to adopt both of these policy updates. You have a second? Second. Any further discussion? So all these, these are all just related to that, right? That's correct, yeah. No other, nothing else? No, I'm just playing catch up. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Um, emergency watershed protection program construction bid opening impossible award. Okay, so uh, this is a project we have with the um, Department of Agricultural and Natural Resource Conservation Service. Um, and we, we actually have three projects uh, with this. The first one uh, has gone to design bid and uh, the plans are formulated. So we sent out an RFP for construction and we've gotten eight responses back. So. Flo, you're missing out on the fun. <laughs> Just I'm right here with you. <laughs> just not, not in person. Yeah, no, no, I'll, I'll, I'll hold the envelope to yeah. the camera and you can I guess read through it. Johnny Carson. Yeah. It's great we got so many bids. Well, we had a couple um, interest in the first, and then I put it on the Vermont bid registry and, and got a lot of um, inquiries after that. So, uh, Greg, you want to go with yours? All right, Holstrom Excavating. Um, uh, submitting bid on behalf of Holstrom Excavating LLC for the plans of Fitzgerald Environmental Associates uh, LLC dated final plan 6 7 2024 for $70,570.42. Okay, uh, Joe, you, you want to go with your first one? Um, Hogan Excavating LLC and how much more do you want with that? Uh, just, the, just the, the total. Amount. Yeah. Seventy-seven thousand five hundred. Okay, Carol, your first one. K Bell Advance, Landworks, and Hauling. Eighty-five thousand two hundred and forty-one. And I have J Merrill Construction LLC, uh, eighty-nine thousand eight two five. Okay. Are you ready, Brad? Northwoods Northwoods Excavating Incorporated. Um, 
Magnum Excavation, LLC. I'm going to say it's $190,100. Okay. Jeremy Bogey, DBA Blue Mountain Trucking and Excavating, $210,000. from Isaacs excavating out of West Charleston. Their amount is 163,000. Um, my recommendation is that uh, we let the engineer uh, take a look at these because there's quite a bit, almost uh, Three times the difference between the lowest and the highest. Quite so. Um, yeah, so recommend we table this, let him take a look at these, and come back at the next meeting, and I'll make that a motion. Here's that. I second that, and I appreciate the fact that I agree we should do that as well. Can I just ask a question? Sure. Will the engineer go back and ask for, I mean, there's not no detail in here, so will he, or will he just really talk? How will he assess the, based on these? I would assume he would take and call up each Okay, that's what I'm wondering. Okay, just want to make sure. What is the work that they did for these? This. Oh, that uh, is uh, Street Bank Stabilization on Jones Brook. Uh, okay. Do you want to jump in anything more? Yeah. Yeah, that's my property, and I just want to start to, by saying uh, I really greatly appreciate all the help I'm getting from the town on getting through this process with the USDA. Um, probably you are wondering, the USDA is going to um, refund all of the money for the project, so it's, it's federal funding that's going to fund the project, but the way that the system works is the town has to be a sponsor. Um, and I appreciate uh, letting uh, Jordan at Fitzgerald look at all these because he did have uh, conversations intimately with a lot of these contractors and I think uh, he'll make a good decision. He hosted Give you a, a good site visit yeah, with we a lot of these, I don't know how yeah. many. Yeah, there was six at the site visit. I think the ones that are really high are the guys that weren't there, just mm -hmm. throwing a big number at it. But Good. I think he had a sense of, you know, the kinds of questions the guys were asking and, you know, he probably would have some good input. Good. Yeah. Anything else on this? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, fire warden appointment? No. Can move on. Nope. Uh, 715 Mercy Mothership Protection oh. for Engineering Award. There we go. So this is for the other two um, projects. Um, one on down the road, uh, 765 Jones Cook, and one on Route 12. Uh, we put out a RFP for engineering um, for these two and did not get any uh, responses. Um, subsequent to that, we did receive a proposal from Premier Engineering, uh, Ryan Libby out of uh, Northfield. Uh, his proposal came in at $36,000, which was above the amount we had uh, left in the uh, engineering services portion of the grant. Uh, so the USDA or NRCS, um, we did a uh, grant agreement with them to increase the amount. Uh, so this is the loan bid for that and I move to accept the bid from Premier Engineering. Fair second. I'll second. Any further discussion? Do we 
At least this is uh, reimbursable yeah. here again through the USDA. And, yeah. and we've like checked the references and all that. Actually, Correct. Actually, okay, good. Yep, yeah, I'm good. Any other on this? Hearing nothing. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, Fire warden appointment. Uh, Nick Dabarczyk. So this is, yep. Yeah. And B, B, C appointment, Isabel. Uh, so the uh, term of the uh, force fire warden is for five years. Uh, Nick Arbachek served as our fire warden and wants to continue serving as it. So I move to adopt, uh, appoint Nick Arbachek as the fire warden for five years. A second. <laughs> Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. And then um, Diane Isabel's uh, term on the Berlin Economic Development Committee uh, is up, so I <coughs> move to appoint her to a three year term uh, on the Economic Development Committee. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Aye. Motion carries. Um, Washington County Unified School District, Union Unified School District, public forum on school building reconfiguration. Um, so I know this has received a lot of attention on Front Porch Forum over the weekend. Um, they are exploring several different uh, configurations for the uh, school buildings and they would like to host a joint meeting with the select board sometime in June or July. Um, I recommend that we take them up on their offer and I think um, probably look to hold it someplace other than this because I would like to see a lot of public participation on this a lot of questions floating around there and I think it'd be a good opportunity for, for everybody to hear what um, what the options are that are being looked at and everything so I will work with the school board and get something like it might be a regular meeting night or it might be a special meeting um, you get the schools of venue. Uh, that's one possibility, or I don't range. know what. I'm range. I was thinking of the Chestnut Place, maybe even there. Yeah. Um, Some place air conditioning. <laughs> so there'll be more on that coming. Okay. Um, Department of Public Safety restricted vendors listing. So. Uh, as I mentioned before, the Department of Public Safety had, had conducted that risk assessment. Um, so the two policies that were in question, uh, you know, were noted as findings um, from them. And uh, like I said, they have accepted both of these policies and have removed us from the restricted um, vendor listing uh, with the department um, emails got a little heated, maybe, between us and the Department of Public Safety, but uh, regardless of what one of those emails said, I do feel I was civil and professional at all times, <laughs> even though their email was insulting. They, they're not here to take and defend themselves, Tor. <laughs> Okay, um, so no further action on that. We're, we're clear on that. Okay. Um, V-Trans, I'm so actually we can drop that from the agenda that he was, uh, yeah, that's been resolved. That has been too. Woo. Okay, uh, your letter. Engagement? Yeah. So uh, this is just a formality. Uh, we have to do each year that uh, I'm, you know we've entered into a three-year contract with Sullivan, Sullivan and Powers as our uh, auditor, and they're just looking for the 
um, signed letter of engagement to conduct the audit. So I don't know. I guess we need a motion on that. So I make that motion to adopt or sign the letter of engagement. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, FEMA reimbursement anticipation borrowing resolution. So we are getting very low on cash. Um, especially since our next <coughs> major influx of cash won't be until early August when the first quarter of the tax bills are due. Um, now, some of that, including the warrants, is the paving uh, bill for um, Airport Road, which is about 200000 Um But well, we're going to go ahead and pay that because the sooner we get that paid, we can get the reimbursement from the, uh, from the state. That was a grant program with the state. Uh, to purchase that but like many grant programs we've got to expend the funds first and then we get reimbursed so that's why that's in there um, but otherwise um, we as a town do not have enough cash to make it through early August uh, just for payroll alone uh, and I don't like getting paid um, so couple different options here um, well the first thing is um, we're not paying the school portion of our property taxes at this time because that's about a million dollars right there um, so that gives us a little bit of a reserve um, but we could the, the public works board uh, specifically the sewer fund has funds in reserve um, that we talked about in the past last fall about borrowing from them. Uh, they're not happy about that, um, but um, that is what it is. Uh, I did have Callie checking with uh, rates from the banks um, she's gotten one response so far, which is from Community National Bank. Uh, option one would be a line of credit at 5.67% uh, for a term up to 12 months. Uh, option two would be, you know, just a straight note at 5.42% uh, uh, for a one-year term. I would want to do some math on this. Now, you know, also keep in mind that um, when the Gary Hotel prop, you know, purchase closes, then we're going to get an inflow of cash from there as well. So I'm not sure that we actually need the funding for the full year, then that, that, that maybe the line of credit might be the more appropriate way to go. Um, Does the Public Service Board have what we would need. They do. Now, the interest payments, uh, we just received word last week that the interest will be reimbursable through FEMA. So we got a meeting tomorrow with FEMA to just verify that and um, make sure we understand that correctly, you know, what they're saying is what we're understanding. Um, so, I'm, I'm not opposed, you know, six months ago I said the Public Works Board was the way to do it. But if, you know, if we can do it, you know, and get the interest reimbursed, that might be the way to go. Yeah. Um, at this point, I'm it was like only receiving one quote from the interest rates. I'm in, more inclined to Let's hold off at this time and maybe we'll need a special meeting 
in the next week or two to, to further finalize this. Works for me. Yeah. Only because we're, we're in this because of funds we, we used during the flood, and we're waiting for FEMA reimbursements yes. for that. Correct. So, being that FEMA will reimburse us for our interest, whenever that will come, will that come first or after? The reimbursement of which we're asking for anyway. So that, that I don't you know. know. I mean, right. That's that's what the meeting tomorrow is. All that's going to all going to work out. So this so I don't know if we. This okay. doesn't happen at the end of every fiscal year. No, well, this is a uh, new because of the flooding. Okay. Yeah. We've we've spent well over eight hundred thousand dollars on the flood expenses. So that we if. But for the flood, that 800 would be in our bank. Correct. Okay. And we'd be paying the school and everything else. So. <sighs> so we want to table this the next meeting? Yes, sir. Yeah. I'll make that a motion. Second. Although, uh, any further discussion? <coughs> we'll just, it, it, uh, it may, next meeting may, might be a special meeting before July 1st. Yeah. Okay, any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, licenses, permits, and vouchers. Oh, here it is. <laughs> Payroll warrant 24 20. Oh, wait. I'd like to start with. I move. Yeah. I move payroll warrant 24 27 for payroll from June 2nd, 2024 to June 15th, 2024 to be paid on June 18th, 2024 in the amount of $63,754.08. Second. And there should be more. Yeah. Oh, do I do them? The Just do them all together. Okay. Yeah. Um, I move payroll warrant 24G27 with check number 24016 to 24054 in the amount of $372,779.93, November 2023. Oh, and I move May, November 2023 to May 2024 general journal entries. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Aye. Um, let's see here. Approval of minutes. We have none. The copy that Cowie sent out was a duplicate that we had already approved. Okay. Okay. I thought so. Uh, round table, Joe. I'm good, thank you. Carla? Tour, are you planning to do a? I'm wondering about an all board meeting. Were we going to have something like I'm that? I'm trying to put something together. Okay. And yeah. If you need help, let me know. Okay. I'm trying to help you. That's it. Tour. Um, every five years, we're required by FEMA to update our local hazard mitigation plan. Uh, it was last approved in 2020. Um, so the five years will be up next year. So we have been awarded a grant uh, from the Department of Public Safety uh, to complete that process. And an RFP has been issued uh, for a consultant to guide us through that process. <coughs> okay, anything else? No. I had a call from a constituent over on Chandler Road. And she was expressing her concerns about the new configuration of Chandler and Route 12. And the, I went over and looked at it, and I can see some of her concerns. But the big one that I see is there's no longer a fairly straight shot up Chandler Road off of 12 heading south. So people are worried about not making the hill on the first try. Uh, but uh, I don't know if there's anything we can do about that. I mean, it was, it's, uh, the blacktop's already down. I mean, 
I would like to think that we can keep track of uh, any accident reports, see if there's an increase, decrease, or whatever. But I know the state was was um, did this for uh, for what they considered safety concerns. So I don't know. Um, but I didn't tell her I would bring it up at meetings. So that's all for me. Uh, Entertain any, anything for uh, executive? Uh, did Flo have anything? Flo? No, not tonight, but thank you so much. Yeah. Um, and you have an executive session. Um, this is going to be the two separate motions. Uh, I move to make a specific finding that premature general public knowledge the clear replaced the town at a substantial disadvantage regarding the police union contract and probable civil litigation to which the town may be a party. Okay. Here, oh, here a second. Second. Oh. <laughs> we were sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> sleeping on the job. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. We're in executive no, session. No, not I move to enter into executive session for a police union contract agreement under 1 VSA 313A1B and legal probable civil litigation under 1 VSA 313A1E. Second. Any, uh, any, any vote on this? Uh, I do expect action regarding the police contract. Okay. Um, any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We're in, Aye. We're in executive session. <laughs> we should do it. Um, okay, Tor, a motion on the. I move that we. Hear me. Uh, I move that we adopt uh, Article 52, critical incidents with the. Uh, between the town of Berlin and the Teamsters Local 597 for the police department. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 You're on it, Flo. 